Cube. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Silicon Angle Goodbye's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Kelly here at Wikibon.org, analyst and big data. Uh, doing the presentations, sharing everyone's big report about the market sizing. And uh, we heard Ankar Gupta, who is the GM of Metascale, um, here to talk about what's going on here in the big data world. And, you know, analytics, data, infrastructure, it's all coming together. It's a perfect storm. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, John. So here's the update, here's the update on Metascale. What's happening with the company and what are you guys doing here at the event? And then we want to, let's just get into some of the conversations. Yeah, so John, you guys were really fun to talk to, so I'm, I'm glad to be back here. Um, and thank you for having me here. So since last time we spoke about Metascale, we've been doing a lot of, uh, lot of fun stuff, and at this event we recently announced our own Metascale branded Hadoop appliances. So what we saw in the, uh, in the market was there is a need for, for a ready-to-go Hadoop appliance that can be implemented quickly, comes with fully managed services. The companies do not have to go through the pain point of uh, you know, putting, a hardware, putting the hardware together, uh, understanding which, what kind of Hadoop software or Hadoop distribution they need to use, and then how to implement it in their data centers. Mm -hmm. So what's the big trend line that you guys seen that you're, that's, that's really lifting up your value proposition here? Is it the data science side, is it the analytics, is it the Hadoop piece, all of the above? What's the big um, trend that's floating up the mm -hmm. tide? Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting actually. We, we, we see three types of customer base for ourselves. So one is the companies that are really in the early, early phases of Hadoop they, or big data. Uh, and they're looking to see you know, how to really go about this whole Hadoop journey, uh, how to build use cases, how to build their big data strategy. And that's where I, our, our, our experience from Sears World, where we were born out of, uh, comes in really handy. We help companies understand uh, or build their big data strategy. We help them develop the big data center of excellence so how to use Hadoop, how to build use cases around it, and then really build talent, whether you hire talent, you rent talent, or you grow it from within. So that's one kind of customer. Then there are others that are in advanced stage of using Hadoop. So now they're talk they already have Hadoop infrastructure, and they're talking about how do they put top-notch analytics, analytical tool, tool on top of it? How do they put, you know, bring data science on top of Hadoop and really utilize it to manage their data better, to get sense out of the data from different sources that are coming to them. And the third, ty third type of customer base that comes to us, which is companies that started on their Hadoop journey because their internal central IT has said they could do it. But now, after making some investment, they don't know what to do about it. They, uh, and you guys actually published a report on how you know, big reasons why companies fail in their implementation of Hadoop uh, because they don't have talent or they don't build use cases or they don't have an efficient use of uh, the infrastructure. So we see uh, the three big areas. So let me ask you what's changed since in New York, we had Big Data NYC, uh, we talked there, but a couple of things that came out is that that event was the vertical focus. Mm -hmm. um, so you had your, your discipline in retail, I'll say is one obvious one. What other verticals do you see right now in terms of that's really, really going, pushing the analytics to the farthest? Sure, um, so coming out of retail, it was uh, natural that we have most of the use cases that were tested and used in the retail world. However, because we were born out of retailer, a, re a large retailer, it sometimes gets very hard for us to work with other retailers. They see value in what we bring to the table, but they may be uh, particular or you know, not very com comfortable about sharing data with, with a company that, that is from another retailer. So having said that, we're seeing a lot of traction actually, uh, co retail companies that reaches out to us and where they, do they don't have a direct competition with Sears. So it's one kind of companies that we talk to. Then there are companies uh, in uh, talking about vertical in healthcare. We're seeing a lot of traction. Uh, seems like now with the you know Obamacare and all kind of new rules that are coming up, management of that data and making sense from the data is becoming more and more important for com for companies. The third sector I would say is uh, financial sector, uh, where again utilization of Hadoop not just to manage data but also the kind of use cases that we have talked about about which is you know using Hadoop for all of your batch processing using Hadoop to actually reduce your expensive EDW footprints. So those are the kind of use cases we now see uh, some, some kind of demand of uh, in financial sector as well. So let's talk about the platform wars that are going on. Obviously everyone wants to have a platform. Sure. Right? You guys have platform services as well. What, mm -hmm. are, what, are the, what does it take for someone to have a successful platform? And what are some of the myths out there that some customers think a platform should look like and or uh, the key success factors, maybe I should just say that, but just, let's just go into the platform. What does it take to have a good platform in Hadoop? 
Uh, you mean Hadoop infrastructure? Yeah, Hadoop infrastructure and dealing with Hadoop data. Sure. So, um, I mean, this is this is one big problem we saw in the market, which is why we launched our Hadoop, Hadoop appliance. So, what happens is there is there is there is some kind of uh, tussle must, must, or, or, or differentiation. I don't know what the right word would be between a BU business unit which wants to use Hadoop and make sense out of the data, and then there is central IT which is obviously busy with their day job and and all that is on their plates. So now they are not always you know going out and managing that and building that Hadoop infrastructure <laughs> and managing it, but BU wants it. So they don't have the IT to build and manage the infrastructure, and IT, central IT doesn't necessarily have time or resources mm -hmm. to do that. So I think that's that's a key of, you know, how now how do you go about it? Do you hire somebody from outside and then have them build the infrastructure, but we still be in compliance with the central IT rules and regulations and such? And so, uh, which is one big reason why we launched our Hadoop appliance, it's actually ready to go uh, Hadoop infrastructure, which has three main benefits. One, the, it comes with pre, it comes pre-built with our own reference architecture and our no, own knowledge of what has been successful in the market in managing Hadoop in a large enterprise. So, what kind of worker nodes are most successful? What what you should what should be the reference architecture for a name node or data node? Then whether you should use Intel versus AMD? What kind of processor speed? Uh, what kind of hard disk? Do you use more dense hard disk? Do you use you know? Mm -hmm. What, what should the size be? Then second is, it's a completely 24 by seven managed services. So a company doesn't need to really worry about the, uh, uh, worry about taking care of the infrastructure or actually buy or hire resources from their own IT to manage the infrastructure. It comes fully managed, so it's our job. Not only we build and implement the appliance for a company, we manage it 24 by seven remotely. And the third benefit, it's really easy to, it's kind of plug and play, right? We have our own switch, so you can, we, we will help them inject and manage data from their existing EDW in, in their data warehouse. So all they need to do is have the appliance, buy the appliance of the size that they want, uh, put it in their data center, and they're pretty much good to go. Um, so I want to push on that just a little bit, the, sure. the appliance model and the Hadoop landscape. So you know, when you think about Hadoop, you think scale out commodity boxes. Well, sure. When you think appliance, you think, um, I think when people think appliance, they probably think Exadata first, which may be one of the first appliances they think. But talk about your view of how the appliance model works or I would say works or doesn't work. I think mm -hmm. you're going to say works because mm -hmm. first you're, you're, you're embracing it. But how does it work in, in the Hadoop um, uh, paradigm? Sure. Um, and are there any trade-offs when you do the appliance model versus the kind of roll your own scale out? Yeah, so when you traditionally when you think of applying, you feel like you're buying yourself on just a box. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the box has everything for you and, and, and that is it. Uh, the way we define our appliance, it's, it is a box, but it is a very flexible box. So um, one, uh, one, it is, our appliance comes with, so it is our own reference architecture mm -hmm. and the hardware that we, we think fits the best in, depending on the size of appliance you want. But then from there, it is very flexible. So I'll give you an example how we are different from others. Um, we have, our appliance doesn't necessarily come with uh, our distribution. So we give our customer a choice. If they have a choice to go with, whether it's Hortonworks or Cloudera or Apache or any other distribution that they want to put on top mm -hmm. of their appliance, then we could do that and manage it for them. Or we could use one of the one of the distribution that we think will fit into that customers for, for their specific use cases and would work for them. So that's really a lot of flexibility right there, that they don't have to bind themselves to a particular distribution. So if they're looking for more security, they may choose MAPAR over uh, you know, a cloud era of works, or if they're looking for uh, a, a, to manage the appliance on their own, they would want to buy a cloud era manager and, and you, you do, it, do it on their own internally. So that's one. Second is this appliance is extendable easily. So if you if you want to grow from 10 terabyte to 25 to 50, and you know from multi -tera, multi 100 terabytes, it's really you 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 just add either more nodes to the same appliance, or you buy multiple appliances that are pretty much plug and play. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think expansion of that infrastructure is not as difficult as probably what it used to be, and you don't really need to because how to balance the data what was the case before, because Hadoop is pretty robust in, in managing data across mm -hmm. you know, d d different servers, different appliances, essentially. So once you plug and play, Hadoop automatically rebalances the data, automatically does the fault tolerance for you. So I think the benefit of having that ecosystem really helps. And then this appliance, as I said, is very flexible coming from us, mm -hmm. distribution neutral, uh, management neutral, and then obviously a capacity neutral. Mm, that's, in an certain that's an interesting approach. Um, Kind of switching gears just a little bit. Uh, you talked a little bit about the stress between IT and the business side, when you know, and and you know, there's always there's always a conflict there, right? And there has been for years in any number of areas of IT, not just in around data and big data. Um, but talk a little bit about a little bit about who is your customer? Is it a business person or is it an IT person? 
Yeah, so one way or another, we end up working with an IT person, which is great, we love them. Um, so typically the user of our, uh, when, when we are selling Hadoop or we are selling big data services, the user is primarily someone from business. Uh, because at the end of the day, they're looking for value uh, out, of that, uh, out of that investment. And generally the value is related to what are the use cases, what, what am I getting out of it, which is in the form of either making better sense of data or somehow managing the data in, in, in certain way that's better than what they were doing before. Um, however, a whole lot of time we actually do work with IT directly. In that case, either IT is trying to reduce their uh, uh, EDW footprint, they don't mm -hmm. want to buy those extra ter teradata boxes or any other, you know, whatever EDW they may be using, or they're looking for a more efficient way to to manage their existing EDW. So in both the cases, I think even we always end up working with IT, uh, but your user could be either. Well, that's, I mean, I think as we, as the industry is kind of evolving, I think it's a good sign when the business is, is driving more of the conversation. Um, because I think early in this market, it was focused too much on the tech mm -hmm. and less on what, what's the business outcome. And that's the way you kind of, uh, that's the way you stall a market eventually. But so if we, if we start moving that conversation to the business side, I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about what, uh, you know, what your plans for the for this year. I mean, it's a it's a big year in this market. Um, we're, you know, we're expecting big things. We did our market sizing and um, professional services is a huge part of the market. Mm -hmm. and expected to continue that, that way. What, what's on your plate this year and, and maybe even more broadly, how do you see kind of professional services and, and the services, managed services market evolving um, as the market generally evolves? Sure. Um, so we see professional services again. Um, so talking about MetaScale first, we grew about over 300% over 2012 and 13, and we expect uh, similar or higher growth this year. We're seeing a lot of demand. MetaScale is uh, looking to expand, expand multifold. We're hiring a lot of uh, uh, Hadoop resources. So if you come across some, please send them away. Will do. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's that's one we'll thing. We'll trade you some UI guys for our, <laughs> for some back end. <laughs> you have some guys. amazing guys. I'll take them. <laughs> um, and and so that's one thing. I think professional services at some point of time, as Hadoop becomes more and more mainstream, we do see that as more uh, as more companies embrace Hadoop, uh, they will they will become self sufficient in management of that Hadoop. And I think there will be more tools. So for example, the whole MapRs uh, command line tool is very self sufficient. I've heard from engineers that they really love using it. So mm -hmm. similarly, Cloud Data Manager, I think at some point of time, uh, these services, when they are economical enough, then and, and then there are other versions that are out there, that it will become, uh, at some point of time, nominal for companies to use them within their internal, uh, to manage the infrastructure using their internal IT services. But I think where Hadoop is today, uh, I see uh, significant growth. I mean, you guys probably know numbers better than I do, but. We see significant growth in the professional market. We see a lot of companies are in the nascent stage still thinking about you know, how to really go about it. The, the, the market is becoming so crowded. Every vendor is coming out and saying, my solution is the best. My NoSQL database is better than the other, and my database is faster than other, and, and whatnot. So we're still talking about basics. We're still talking about, you know, guys, think of a long-term story. Think of what your whole big data strategy is all about. How do you use a big data center of excellence so you investment that you're making today are for long term because your data is not going to go smaller from here. It's only going to grow with the digital uh, storm that we all have in our lives. It's a digital storm. It's true, it's happening. And I totally agree with you. But I want you to, to the final question as we got a break here. I want you to share with the folks out there uh, in your own words, what's happening at this moment in history around big data, big data SVR event here. We have Strata Conference going on as well uh, behind us uh, across the street. Um, what's the moment that's the most newsworthy right now in this big data landscape? Yeah, when you mention history, I'll have to put my philosophical head and uh, really think about it. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. I think big data is becoming even bigger. Who thought that Hadoop, which was an open source uh, uh, ecosystem about, you know, six, seven years ago, was going to be such mainstream and there will be so much development, conferences and videos around it. So um, even the buzzword today, I think, is still a lot of companies talking about new, newer technology. I think the buzzword today will be the enterprise data hub using Hadoop to manage all of your data, both structured and unstructured, at a single source of truth. And at Sears and Metascale, we've been talking about it for lock up several, several years now and done a lot of webinars and, and white papers on it. So I think that's the key word, big buzzword again, using Hadoop as your enterprise data hub. And then now adding data science and, and top-notch analytics on top of it uh, will create some wonders that uh, I guess we'll see some interesting results coming out from I think uh, in medical field and in financial field that we probably have not been able to do before in the past. 
I think the history is going to show, the history books will show, you know, folks like Amr Awadal and Mike Olson, the folks at Cloudera, and then the folks at Yahoo who did all that work when no one was watching, right, and then brought that out and made it commercially available. Really created an industry. I think, you know, when all the squabbling gets taken care of and everyone starts growing to the next level, I think we're going to look back on this moment. I agree. Hadoop is here to stay. The tooling's being worked on in memory. All the good stuff, the goodness is happening. And you know, that's only best for customers to get the insight. So sure. uh, it's all about the data. And uh, we'll, we'll be more, we're right back here inside the queue. We're live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV event, extension to our Big Data NYC event a few months ago here in Silicon Valley. This is the Cube, SiliconANGLE, and WikiWan's coverage of Big Data SV. We'll be right back. <laughs>